what stands out to me the most are the icons. These are the shoes that are timeless. These are the shoes that, that you'll want to have in your collection five years from now, ten years from now, and they'll really describe you to be a sneakerhead. In the mid 80s, when Foot Locker emerged, Foot Locker was and still is one of the best places to buy sneakers. I love what Mike does because the campouts and the lineups get crazy. It's great that somebody came there and said, you know what, I'm going to regulate. I was like, well, I could stay home and do nothing, or I could go, you know, camp for sneakers. How bad could it be? It's pretty bad. <laughs> you know, summertime is fine, but once it gets a little colder like it is now, you know, takes a toll on you, but we do it because we love sneakers. I like the way the community is transitioning, dealing with the camp out and seeing how it is to how people react now when I come out and how friendly they are. They're more open to actually being a community. So many times you'll meet somebody it's like, oh, you know, I didn't, I never really knew that there are people who were like me into shoes and like because of Crep City I'm able to meet these people. I love the fact that you know, we've been able to create an event and an online platform that sort of can bring all those sort of people together. The first pair I really bought in Foot Locker was the Island Blue Prestos. That was when I first, first time I really spent my money and a good amount of money on a pair of shoes. People like what we do because I think the UK community is pretty close. My cousin, cousin Jeanette, she came back from Florida with the Air Jordan 5s. These just blew my mind. I, I know for a fact that that is the point of where the obsession grew for me. When you start keeping the boxes, that's when you know you're kind of getting into something. It's almost like an addiction, I guess. Say New Balance Gallery up just as really a, a kind of place for folk to go and chat about future drops, you know, past, you know, classics, rumours. We've had the occasional leak that we've had our knuckles wrapped for. We started it to write about what we're interested in, and that's what we keep doing because we feel like we represent a lot of girls that are similar to us who weren't being represented before. What I'd like to see anyway is that there are a lot more unisex collabs because I think brands are noticing a lot more that girls do want trainers. That's why it was so important to me for not just starting a blog that was about women but that was unisex and pointing out the fact that girls like the same things as guys. On Thursday, Kitty and I are going to be discussing the new women's collection. I think the, the event Nakedness um, is right now it's like a brand. It's not only a convention or event, it's like family. My all-time favorite is the Air Max 90. Yeah, I played with them, I slept in them. For me, it's like a kind of perfection. Yeah, I guess Cortez really brought me into the sneaker game at 13, <laughs> after Forrest Gump. When I saw those, I was like, yeah, these are sick. And it was a Foot Locker exclusive. When that arrived from Japan, I kid you not, I, I literally stared at that for hours. Like you smell inside the shoe. Mm. Nothing better than new shoe smell. I eventually found them in my size, so yeah, that was a good day for me. <laughs> and it's intoxicating, what can I say? Mm -hmm.